you know, one thing I've thought long and hard about is how I can set up an automatic watering system for my carnivorous plants. Now, as much as I love watering them, I water all of them by hand, by the way, I regularly ask myself the question, is there a more efficient, less time-consuming way to water my plants? Is there a way, for example, where I can go on holidays and not even have to worry about whether my plants have been watered or not? Well, I'm glad to say I've come up with a concept. It's a concept that I've thought long and hard about. Now, before I share it, I would love to hear from all of you what you guys think of it. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Maybe you can suggest an improvement on my current idea. Either way, don't forget to leave a comment. My name is Jerry from Suckle and Fly Traps. Okay, so before I explain my concept, I'm going to quickly explain the current setup that I have now. Now, this is my elevated wooden platform. And of course, on top of that platform are my carnivorous plants. It goes all along down the side of the house. The reason why it's elevated is because of this color bond fence here that's north facing over there. So if these plants were too low, they wouldn't be receiving enough light and hence they wouldn't be as healthy as they are. So hence why I installed this wooden platform to give them that extra sunlight. The things I do just for my plants, eh? Okay, so in terms of watering, I have two options. I can either use my rainwater tank, which is quite small. It's only about 100 litres, and that's been connected to this downpipe here. So whenever it rains, some of the water comes down into the tank. When that gets full, the rest just goes down to the... Um, the downpipe. Now my other option is my reverse osmosis canister here or unit. Now it's a bit dusty because they have been doing some works here so I'm gonna have to get all that dust off but basically what it is it's a reverse osmosis system and it's a four stage. There's canisters there on the bottom one two three I'm gonna to have to clean that up but I've basically that RO systems is connected up to the tap here and for me to turn it on I just simply turn it on here with this uh, handle here so I turn that on now that's pumping water tap water through there and from here that's the fresh water that comes out. Let's have a look, see how much comes out. Not much comes out. So, as you can see, it's quite a small amount. Oh, there's a little bit there. So, as you can imagine, with so many plants that I have, I've got about 200 plants. I've got to wait a while for my watering can to fill up. That's what I basically do. Just fill it up like that. Once it's full, I go and water my plants by hand and then repeat the process. So they're my two options when it comes to watering my plants, okay? This RO unit used to be in the laundry, but I hooked it up to this outdoor tap and uh, it's been going well with this setup. Okay, now you have an idea of the setup that I have. I'm going to now further explain the concept that I have in mind that will help me achieve the automatic watering for my carnivorous plants. So as you can see here in front of me, I have this foam box. It's a special foam box which vertically positions these pots, say about that far from the bottom. Now if you would have seen my carnivorous plants nursery updates, um, you would have seen these plants growing in these boxes. They've been in there for a while, all throughout the growing season, through the spring, Hot summer days all the way now here till autumn and these plants are part of my experiment let me explain so this sundew here 
if I take that pot out, you can see down here there is this plastic bag which is waterproof and that's got the water in there. It's distilled water, rainwater, reverse osmosis filtered water. And you can see here there's a wick that soaks up the water through capillary action. And the end of that wick is inserted into the peat moss at the bottom of this pot. And as that wick soaks up the water through capillary action, it then transfers that water to the peat moss, keeping it nice and damp, thereby keeping the plant happy as well. Now, I've done that with Venus's flytrap, sundews. Look at this one over here. There's proof there that capillary watering does work and it really does keep the plant happy. We've got the sundews down there and I'm using this with the Saracenia seedlings as well, this capillary action watering system and you, as you can see here they're very very happy. Now it's important to know that these, the bottom of these pots don't actually sit in the water, they're above the water. The wick itself just soaks up that water doing all the work. And that's why I thought this foam box here would be a great little way to experiment and see whether my concept works. And I've also done this with mature North American pitcher plants, again throughout the growing season, and I've had no issues at all. Okay, so let's have a further look at my Carnivorous Plants platform. As you can see here, there are these three holes which have been laboriously drilled into the cross beams. You can see here how thick this wood is. It took me ages to cut this with a arbor drill bit. Now, all these holes are being cut equidistantly. They're equally apart. That ensures that the pipes that are going through those holes uh, are nice and flat that will then ensure that the water is level thereby watering all the plants above these pipes so with that concept that I had in mind with the capillary action the water was on the bottom of the plants the water is going to be on the bottom of these plants on the wooden platform and it's going to be contained in these PVC pipes now these pipes are as I said PVC and they're stormwater pipes and I think they're 90 millimeters diameters 90 millimeter diameter pipes and as you can see here those pipes are running all the way down to the end of the wooden platform and you can see here I've got these T pipes I'm also going to have pipes running down here on the outside of this wooden platform as you can see here these plants are going to be overhanging the edge so it would be nice to have those pipes running underneath them to water those plants above okay so that's the PVC pipes down the bottom now the plants are going to be watered through capillary action through the wicks down the bottom of the pots. Now how are those pots going to access the water in those PVC pipes? Well, what I've decided to do is I've just cut out this top section. All the pipes are going to be like this and I've achieved this cut using a jigsaw. It's basically just running along, along the length of the pipe on the top part that gap say it's around about a centimeter and a half apart I've got that running not all to the end this part this section here is going under the wooden cross beam so I've managed to just cut it off there just before the edge of that cross beam and I've also stopped that cut just before the end of the pipe goes into that T intersection yeah I'm gonna have to sort of file that out to make it nice and smooth so the 
uh, wicking material doesn't get caught onto it but yeah that's essentially my idea my concept that I have in mind so yeah hopefully it works <laughs>